ثم دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى فأوحى إلى عبده ما أوحى ما كذب الفؤاد ما رأى أفتمارونه على ما يرى ولقد رآه نزلة أخرى عند سدرة المنتهى عندها جنة المأوى إذ يغشى السدرة ما يغشى ما زاغ البصر وما طغى لقد رأى من آيات ربه الكبرى Alhamdulillah, we started Surah Al-Najm last week. And Surah Al-Najm is very unique in its discussion of Wahi and Revelation. And its connection with the previous Surah is very obvious and very clear in how the last Surah Allah Ta'ala says, وَمِنَ اللَّيْنِ فَسَبِّحُ وَأَدْبَارَ النُّجُومِ That after the stars vanish, then continue praising Allah Ta'ala and praising Him. And then the next surah starts with one najmi ila hawa. And the star, Allah Ta'ala takes an oath by it. It's a symbolism that the star is taking use of. We use the star to take guidance, right? People take guidance from the star. Allah Ta'ala is creating a symbolism for us that there is a being of guidance which is more clear even then, even the star whom Allah Ta'ala is sending to you. Allah Ta'ala is sending a being of guidance to you even more clear uh, than the star. This is the Prophet of Allah والسلام, This is Jibreel والسلام, coming to the Prophet of Allah. And that complete chain, which is Allah sending revelation, the angel within which the revelation is sent within his hands, and then the one receiving the revelation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a paradigm of in which the, uh, a strand of which the Quran speaks about. Wahi, revelation. And this specific channel which is Allah to the angel of Jibreel to uh, the Prophet of Allah alayhi wa salatu salam. So there was some discussion regarding that on that the, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, his etiquette and his, his relation with Wahi and Jibreel وسلم, teaching him his strength and وَهُوَ بِالْأُفُقِ الْأَعْلَى when the Messenger of Allah وسلم, saw Jibreel وسلم, in his complete form in the horizon so when Jibreel وسلم, came to the was descending to the earth and his entire Appearance manifested in front of the Messenger of Allah and his wings covered the entire horizons. Then Allah Ta'ala says, Thummadana fatadalla. Then he became closer. Fatadalla. He became closer. Then he approached and drew near Muhammad. Then he became closer. Fatadalla. It also means to become close, but what is the root word of tadalla? It comes from the word dal, which means what? It means a bucket. So the, the bucket is, is lowered, but there's something very important about the bucket. It's lowered by something. It's not lowered by itself. There's a rope connected to the bucket, right? What, is, what did the past verse also say about Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam? عَلَّمَهُ شَدِيدُ الْقُوَى That the being which is Shadidul Quwa teaches the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Mirra, that Jibreel is a possessor of Mirra. Something which is very unique is that Mirra, one of the meanings of this and the words which are derived from it is also rope. Quwa also means rope and Shadid comes from the word Shadda which means to tie, tie a knot. All of these words refer to the idea of a rope. So the, 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 the imagery that we're having, فَتَدَلَّى That Jibreel والسلام, is not coming down by his own will, rather there's a rope attached to him. There's a rope which is, a, a being a, a, which is attached to him, so he's also clinging onto that rope, and then that rope is extended to the Messenger of Allah Where does that rope go to? 
it goes to Allah Ta'ala. And where does this imagery become clear? Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran in another place, وَأَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ That hold firmly and strongly onto the rope of Allah. Comes in hadith that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said that the Quran is حَبْلُ اللَّهِ الْمَتِينَ That the Quran is Allah Ta'ala's rope, strong rope. That one end of it is in the hands of the creation, the other end of it is in the hand of Allah Ta'ala. So there's this beautiful imagery of this connection. The rope is like a tie, it's a connection. So there's a connection between creation to the messenger. That's why you need the messenger. You cannot connect with Allah without the messenger. You need the messenger. You connect through the messenger to the angel, which then connects us to Allah Ta'ala. This is also why you have to believe in angels. Why is it important that it's in our aqidah that if you deny believing in angels, then you are not Muslim. Why is it so important? Why do we have to believe in angels? Why? Because it's, it's the angel that brings revelation. If you don't believe in angels, you're just believing in a huge part of the Quran. Hmm? So you have to believe in angels. So the angel Jibreel became very near the Messenger of Allah now there's also another imagery over here, which one of the scholars of Tafsir he mentions. He's like the, the example of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, hovering over the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salam, is like the example of the teacher. The teacher, when he sees the student and the student asks a question, so the, the teacher becomes close and then he kind of puts his head over the student and then he'll whisper an answer and you know, subtly teach the student. Right now, Jibreel is the teacher and Muhammad is the student. So it's like he's becoming close to the Prophet of Allah and he's kindly, gently teaching the Prophet of Allah. Then Allah Ta'ala gives us more imagery of what this event was like. Until he was but two bow lengths away or near. It's a very famous ayah, many people quote it. Until he was but two bow lengths away or nearer. So Jibreel والسلام, was like the. So this is the, the, the translation is also an interpretation here. Qaba refers to what? Qaus is, it's the bow. So that's very easy. Qaba is two definitions of Qaba. One opinion is that Qaba is the, the, the arrow, it's, the, the bow itself is like a D, it has two parts. So there's the part in, within the middle where the arrow is placed. But both halves are called Qaba because it's actually two pieces and you put those two pieces together and it becomes the bow. So one opinion is Qaba is half of the bow then, half of the bow. The other opinion is Qaba is Qaba is the distance between the bow and the string. The bow and the string. Regardless, Allah Ta'ala is saying He is like the that distance between two bows. So if you take half of the bow, which is one qab, for example, and then you put two together, that becomes one bow. So why did Allah Ta'ala say the length of one qab from two bows? He could have said, Kana qaba qawsin. He could have said two halves of one bow. But why say one half of two bows? Which also equals one bow. So one half of two bows. Which is one bow. It still equals one bow. Why did Allah Ta'ala say it like this? So some of the Mufassirun, they say that Qawsayn, the idea of two bows at the time of Jahiliyyah, referred to something very specific. The people of Jahiliyyah, 
when they would want to merge their clan with another clan, another tribe, and have a truce, you know, build, build an alliance between one tribe and another tribe. There was a tradition that they would do. They would take two arrows and they would put two bows and they would put them on top of each other. So then it was as if those two bows became one. And then they would take the arrow and they would shoot from both of the bows at one time. This was to say that the rida or the pleasure of this tribe is the pleasure of the other tribe. And what angers this tribe is what will anger the other tribe. Meaning both tribes have become one. So you put two bows together, you shoot an arrow, it's as if they're working together, they're one. So Allah Ta'ala is telling us that the distance between both of the bows became one. What are the two bows? That is like the Prophet of Allah and Jibreel alayhi We know the example, what happened when the first revelation, when the first revelation took place. Jibreel alayhi said, Iqra, read. The Prophet of Allah said, Ma'ana biqari, I can't read. Then Jibreel alayhi actually embraced the Prophet right? He actually embraced the Prophet So that was itself a sign, a big example. So Jibreel alayhi and the Prophet because of wahi and the channel of that rope, that one channel, that one connection, then their vision of their of wahi, what they are, what they are uh, calling towards, now becomes one. What the Messenger of Allah is calling towards is exactly what Jibreel is calling towards. What Jibreel is calling towards is what Muhammad Sallallahu is calling towards, and that is wahi, the message of Allah Taala. That is wahi, the message of Allah Taala. So until he was, but two bow lengths away or nearer. This is the example of Jibreel and Muhammad Sallallahu hmm? That their example, because of Wahi, is like one. فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى Thus it is he, Allah himself, who revealed to his servant Muhammad Sallallahu That which he revealed, he revealed to him that which he revealed. Now what do we learn from that? Allah Ta'ala could have said, Awha ilayhi al-Qur'an. Allah revealed the Qur'an to him. But why say, Awha ila abdihi ma awha? He revealed to him what he revealed. It's a very ambiguous way of saying, he revealed to him the Qur'an, or he revealed to him revelation. For several reasons. One reason for you and I to think, what could have he revealed to, to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What is it? Number one, to, 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 to spark that uh, you know, desire to know what is it. Number two, that no matter how much we learn wahi and revelation, we will never encompass it completely. It's the same reason why no matter how much tafsir we study, no, how much, no matter how much Quran we read, every single time you read it, every single time you study it, it is as if you never read it before. The, 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 the tradition of revelation of wahi like, continuously renews itself. So it's as if new doors of knowledge Allah Ta'ala continuously opens to you. This is why uh, Ali radiallahu anhu, what did he say? When he described the Qur'an, he said that the Qur'an is like something which does not tear ala kathrat al -rad. No matter how much you open it, you read it, you discover, you try to understand it, you'll never get tired of it. La yashba. No one is ever fulfilled from reading the Qur'an. You can always keep reading. So, فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى He revealed to him what he revealed to him. This is also very, any, to show a, a sort of intimate relationship due to revelation and the Prophet of Allah being honored with wahi. That the Messenger of Allah is chosen by Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala will give to him what he wishes to give to him. He will open those doors of knowledge to him that he wishes to open to him. He will open those doors of knowledge to him that he wishes to uh, open to him. And this is why the Messenger of Allah is the most knowledgeable of creation. More knowledgeable. Uh, after time, the, the, the Messenger of Allah this is an agreed upon principle, 
that the ulul azmi min al rusul the great prophets like Musa, Isa, Ibrahim, and our Prophet والسلام, that they exceed the greatest of the Malaika. So they exceed, they're greater than Israfi, they're greater than Jibreel, they're greater than the other Malaika. Uh, so the Messenger of Allah also, his knowledge is the greatest and the most of knowledge, so much so that a time will come where his knowledge will exceed the knowledge of Jibreel. فَأَوْحَى إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَى مَا كَذَبَ الْفُؤَادُ مَا رَى And there will, be, there will be signs now in this passage. There will be signs now in this passage which will tell us of how the Nabi والسلام, Allah Ta'ala blessed him beyond Jibreel والسلام, as well. مَا كَذَبَ الْفُؤَادُ مَا رأى. Never did the heart belie what it saw. Never did the heart belie what it saw. Now, kadaba, what does kadaba mean? Kadaba has several meanings. It means to, it means to deny something or to lie. You know, to, to believe something is false. But where does it get that or, the origin of that meaning from? Some of the meanings of kadaba means to find something very difficult. You know, so when a person finds a task to be very difficult, that's kadaba. It's the same reason why a person lies, because the truth is too difficult to say. A person will lie when it's too difficult to say the truth. So they find a way out and they'll lie. So when the reality of something is too difficult for, some, for, for, uh, for someone to encompass it, they'll disbelieve in it. This is why Allah Ta'ala says in another place in the Qur'an that if we were to send the angels on the, on the disbelievers, if we were to, more or less what the ayah says, that if we were to open the doors of the unseen to the disbelievers, what will the disbelievers say? That our eyes are made drunk, you know? It's like we're under drugs, you know, and we're seeing hallucinations. We're just... We're under the influence of magic. Why? Because if a disbeliever were to see Jibreel he'd rather say it's a hallucination than believe the reality. Why? His heart is not big enough to encompass it. It's not just the eyes that see. This is why signs and the realities of this observed world are limited. There is a world of unseen. There is a world of the unseen that the eyes cannot see. And the eyes will never see. You need the sixth sense to, to be able to see it. That's the sense of the heart, the fu'ad, the qalb. This is why, what does Allah Ta'ala say in the Qur'an? لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا They have hearts that don't understand. لَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا They have eyes that don't see. Abu Jahl had eyes, he could, he could see very well. Abu Lahab had eyes, they could see very well. So what was Allah Ta'ala saying? Was He saying they couldn't see from their eyes? Clearly they could see. Allah Ta'ala is not talking about the eyes of observed world, of dunya. He's talking about a different set of eyes. He's talking about a different heart. Not this pulsing heart inside your body. He's talking about the world of the unseen. That world of the unseen can never be observed by physical laws. That, for that you need fu'ad, you need the heart, a spiritual heart. That spiritual heart sees. Now the Messenger of Allah, Allah Ta'ala didn't say his heart. He said Al Fu'ad. He didn't say Ma Kadaba Fu'aduhu. He said Ma Kadaba Al Fu'ad. That the heart, referring to the heart of the Messenger of Allah. What does Alif Lam tell us? Alif Lam tadullu ala al kamal. When you attach Alif Lam to something, one of its meanings is that it's something very perfect. So the heart of the Messenger of Allah is very great, very perfect. His heart, Allah Ta'ala blessed it enough that it was able to see Jibreel Alayhi It was able to see things of the unseen. The journey of the Mi'raj will be spoken about after the next couple of ayat. It was able to see that Mi'raj, all of those things, and then absorb it, swallow it. Any other heart would go insane. Any other person would go insane. Would not be, wouldn't have the capacity, the strength, the spiritual strength 
to be able to see those things. So the heart of the Messenger of Allah absorbed, understood, saw all of those things. Then Allah Ta'ala says to the disbelievers that then will you who disbelieve it dispute him about what he saw? So Mira comes from Mirya. There is various different words of shak in the Quran to say doubt. There's shak, there's labs, there's Mirya. There's other words as well. Mirya is that type of shak. It comes from when you have clean water and then people add dirt into it right, to make it muddy. Right? So, so the, the, the truth is there, but then you add something into the truth to make it false, to make it murky, to make it muddy, to make it unclear. So, afatu maruna mira is also a form of argu argumentation, right, to argue. So sometimes when someone's saying the truth, people will argue and then turn that truth murky. They make it polluted because of their argumentation. So then, afatu maruna who are you? Like, who are you? It's as if Allah Ta'ala said, who are you? To doubt the Messenger of Allah and what, and what he saw. Afatumahunahu? Are you anyone to doubt him and what he saw? Alama yara of what he saw? Are you anyone to doubt him? Walaqad ra'ahu nazlatan ukhra. And surely, then will you, and surely yet, very truly, he saw him a second descent. That he saw Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam a second time as well in his complete form. But this time is different. This time is referring to the Mi'raj as the Mufassirun mentioned. عند سدرة المنتهى By the, the low tree. But Allah Ta'ala said رآه نزلة أخرى Not مرة أخرى نزلة also means مرة Another time. But نزلة, where does it come from? From the word نزلة which means to descend. So, وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةً أُخْرَى Before the first time, uh, when he saw him, بِالْأُفُقِ الْأَعْلَى Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam was in a higher place. Now, he's seeing him, what did the Mufassirun mention? When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi went on his journey of Mi'raj, that the, 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 the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa continued traversing the cosmos, the different skies. Right? So much so, until a point came that Jibreel والسلام, said to the Messenger of Allah والسلام, that if I were to go forward even Qadra un Mula, the span of you know part of my finger, right? if I even were to go that much forward, I would be burned by the rays of the hujum, the rays of the veils that Allah Ta'ala has has made. So I am not to go beyond this point. But the Messenger of Allah was commanded to go beyond this point. When he went beyond this point, and then he returned, then he saw Jibreel but this time he's seeing Jibreel from a higher place. That he's seeing Jibreel this time, but from a higher place. By the High, near the heavenly low tree of the utter, uttermost bound, Sidratil Muntaha. Now, this time, in the Sidratil Muntaha, that Jibreel, he's seeing Jibreel by this. Right? Sidra is a word referred to the low, referring to lot in, in this dunya. However, we know that things of that realm, of that wujud, that existence, is completely different. Right. The, the fruits of Jannah, all of these things of Jannah, they're very different compared to, uh, although the names are the same, they're very different in their realities from what they are in this, in this world. So this tree, and it comes in hadith, the Messenger of Allah said, one of the, when I saw it, one of the things that he told the Sahaba is that I saw colors that I cannot describe you. I saw colors I cannot, what, what is the point of telling us this? 
This is just the, the, the minimum amount of information he's telling us that there are things beyond this world. There are things beyond this world you have not seen. You can uh, use your satellite, you can use your telescope. Right? Whatever you're going to see is something, you know, the, at least the colors will be the same. At least you can describe the colors. The Messenger of Allah is saying, I saw colors and things I cannot describe for you. This is beyond what, what, what the eyes can see. And the Sidratul Muntaha. Sidratul Muntaha is the low tree of the uttermost boundary. This is the Muntaha is referring to, this is some sort of boundary. Some sort of boundary. Some of the scholars say that this is the uh, end of the, uh, the skies and the heavens. And beyond it is the Arsh of Allah Ta'ala. This is what some of the scholars say. Allah Ta'ala knows best. عِنْدَهَا جَنَّةُ الْمَقْوَى By it, near which is the garden of the heavenly abode. Near which is the garden of the heavenly abode. جَنَّةُ الْمَقْوَى By the جَنَّةُ الْمَقْوَى There are different names for different darajat, different places of Jannah. The Jannatul Khuld, Jannatul Adam. These are different uh, places in Jannatul Firdaus. These are different places. Jannatul Ma'wa, some of the scholars they say it's a place of Jannah which is, as the word Ma'wa describes, a safe haven. It's a place of safety, shelter. Some of the scholars say that this may be perhaps the place where Adam and Hawa alayhim salatu wasalam were before they descended to the Earth and Allah Ta'ala knows best. Again, these are the efforts of the Mufassirun. Now, assuming that, you know, again, when you're doing tafsir, there's always mahmal, there's always, uh, you know, this, you assume, you know, with dalil you assume, with some evidence you assume. So, assuming that this is the place of uh, Adam and Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam before they descended to the earth. Imagine what the Messenger of Allah is experiencing when he sees this place. That this is, he's seeing Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he's seeing the low tree, he's seeing, and you know, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam at this point, because we know each sky, each sky in the sky above it is like a ring in the desert. So in, in the sky of the dunya, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, his one wing is covering the entire sky. But by the low tree, Jibreel is like a normal angel. This is how great the sky is, how vast the sky is. He's seeing him by the low tree. And the attention is what? And the Sidrat al Mutha. Attention is on the low tree and Jannatul Mawa. Right. And remember, uh, behold, the low tree became suffused with that heavenly brilliancy which suffused it. Yarsha means to cover, to cover something. That, you know, what, behold, what covered the Sidra, what covered it? What is it that covered it? Allah Ta'ala knows best. But there was something that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw, which is why then Allah Ta'ala says, مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا طَغَى 